这个审核三次，才能够判定死刑。The period of the Jin Guan reign, or the reign of Tang Emperor Taizong, made the China of the Tang Dynasty magnanimous, inclusive, and open to new ideas. Ethnic groups were integrated, diverse religious practices were tolerated, social harmony abounded, and people with talent were able to come to the fore. Chang'an, the capital city of the dynasty, was not only a major centre for international business, but also a great stage for writers and artists. Before the Tang Dynasty, Xi'an had been the capital city of the Zhou, Qin, Han, and Sui dynasties, a period covering more than 3,000 years. The Tang Dynasty used the Sui Dynasty's capital Da Xing as its own capital and made no changes to it aside from renaming it Chang'an. At one point, Chang'an covered an area of 84 square kilometers, seven times the area of the city of Xi'an, as it was much later in the Ming and Qing dynasties. The city wall of Chang'an was 12 meters thick, and the circumference of the city was 37 kilometers, the same length as today's Third Ring Road in Beijing. Each of the north, south, west, and east walls of Chang'an City had three gates. The city was, in fact, a model of careful planning, with all streets extending either north to south or west to east. Eleven north-south streets and fourteen west-east streets equally divided the city into 110 neighborhoods. Chu Chua Street on the city's axis was more than 150 meters wide, double the width of today's Chang'an Avenue in Beijing. During the Jin Guan Rain period. The emperor and his officials were praised for their honesty and love of the people. Tang Emperor Taizong was a man who had the human touch, a man of deep feeling. It is known, for example, that when his first wife died, he was overwhelmed by grief. It is also recorded that whenever he was reminded of the six fine steeds that had been with him through various wars, he would fall into sadness. Eventually, he had famous painter Yan Li Ben create paintings of the steeds in accordance with his accounts of them. And he had sculptors make stone sculptures of these horses, and then had them placed within Zhao Ling Mausoleum, where his first wife was buried. The six steeds of Zhao Ling Mausoleum are great ancient Chinese relief works. However, unfortunately, an American by the name of Carl Whiting Bishop had the two best steeds, Sa Lu Zi and Yuan Mao Gua, smuggled into the United States. Where they are now on display in the University of Philadelphia Museum, the other steeds were recovered by local people while in the process of being smuggled, but they were broken. Li Shiming and his officials were praised and admired for their honesty and for the love of the people. His reign was a period of magnanimity and inclusiveness. It was also a time of greater openness. And in 628, the great monk Xuanzang left Chang'an and headed westward in search of Buddhist scriptures. Li Shimin, or Tang Emperor Taizong, was not the only man of great importance during the Tang Dynasty who showed considerable feeling. The great monk Xuanzang was another. Xuanzang knew what he wanted from life, and so, in spite of hardships and dangers. In the year 628, he left Chang'an and travelled to the Western Paradise to acquire important Buddhist scriptures, and it was a journey that involved taking the Silk Road. Xuan Zhang's westward journey wasn't made through the Tuo Bo Kingdom in Tibet, because at the time it was far from safe there. But things were about to change. In the year 640, Tibetan King Sungzan Ganbu proposed that he marry a woman of the ruling Tang Dynasty. Tang Emperor Li Shimin agreed and allowed him to marry Princess Wencheng. 
The princess went on to live in Tibet for about 40 years and was deeply loved by the Tibetans. Through the ancient Silk Road, the Tang Dynasty opened itself to the outside world, and it continued to use the Grand Canal to connect different parts of the north and south of the country. By the time Tang Emperor Xuanzong ascended the throne to celebrate the centenary of the dynasty, the country's population, the amount of arable land and the nation's wealth had reached an all-time high. These are the ruins of the ancient kingdom of Gaochang in the Turpan Basin in Xinjiang. When monk Xuanzang passed through Gaochang on his famous westward journey, he found that most of the city's residents were Han people who had been living here for generations. They had lived in the area since the Han dynasty hundreds of years before to avoid wars on the central plains. Since the 1950s, Archaeologists have excavated some 500 ancient tombs at Astana Cemetery in Turpan, in the process, unearthing tens of thousands of artefacts. These artefacts are evidence of the prosperity of the Central Plains during the Tang Dynasty. By the time Xuanzang finally returned to Chang'an via the Silk Road after 17 years of travel, the journey had taken him along 25,000 kilometers of roads to 110 different countries. The famous Chinese novel Journey to the West was based on Xuanzang's journey to ancient India to acquire Buddhist scriptures. When Xuanzang arrived back in Chang'an, he found it even more prosperous than when he set off on his journey to the west. Its streets were now crowded with business people, foreigners, camels, horses, restaurants and tea houses. Xuanzang returned to Chang'an with 657 major Buddhist scriptures and he was warmly received by the Tang court. Tang Emperor Taizong ordered that Xuanzang translate the scriptures in the city's Hongfu temple. Over the decade that followed, Xuanzang translated around 1,330 volumes of Buddhist scriptures. More importantly, he wrote his book, Record of the Western Regions, which provides detailed descriptions of the geography and local customs of the Western regions, Central Asia and South Asia. Xuanzang's book went on to serve as an important basis on which the Tang central government formed its policy for controlling its western borders. And even today, it is considered one of the world's most important ancient books on geography. It is also used as an important resource for studies of India. A History of Asia, written by the American historian Rhodes Murphy, includes a description of Chang'an during the Tang Dynasty. Chang'an was the eastern terminus of the trade route China had with Central Asia and countries farther away. The city ruled the largest empire the world had ever known, an empire that was bigger than the Han Empire and the Roman Empire. 
people from every part of Asia, Turks, Indians, Persians, Syrians, Vietnamese, Japanese, Jews, Arabs, and even Christians and Byzantines could be found in its streets, making the city an international one. The city was probably the world's biggest city completed according to an overall plan. About one million people lived within its great city walls, and another million lived outside the walls. Chang'an, the capital of the Tang dynasty, was magnificent and inclusive, and it was regarded in its time as the center of the world. The city was full of people from Asia and other parts of the world, and its streets were like a world market, an international fair that never closed. the Tang Dynasty was a period of ethnic integration, religious tolerance, social harmony, and intellectual freedom. Chang'an, the Tang capital, was not only a major center of international trade, but also a breeding ground for literary and artistic talent. With a million people living inside its walls and another million outside, Chang'an was regarded in its day as the center of the world. Thank you for staying with us on today's New Frontiers. I'm Ji Xiaoping from CCTV International. Goodbye.